Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. And welcome back. Seems like it's been a while since we've had a thrift haul, but I've got one. And here it goes. You might be excited about blue mirrored glass. I always am. And uh, it really did come on the scene in the late 20s. I've seen this mirrored glass cut up as lampshades on deco uh, table lamps. But a lot of you might remember it from the 1940s. Your grandparents might have had coffee tables and end tables with blue mirrored glass. Mm -hmm. And uh, many things were made out of it. I have never in my life found a jewelry box made out of blue mirrored glass, but here it is, all original. Good news, it's not chipped. Yay. Lost to the silver? Almost always. If you're a blue glass collector, you know it's really hard to find blue mirrored glass without loss to the silvering on the back. And so when we look at this one, try not to blind you by the light, but there's the top with these wonderful decorative screws holding it on. This is all original beveled glass all the way around. It's amazing none of it is broken. There's even blue glass on the back. You can see most of the loss is on the back, okay? Not so bad on the front, a little bit on the corner. There's one side, there's one side, and the top is really good. The bottom of it has a remnant of a sticker, enough for me to know that this was made by Chesler Products of, um, I believe they were in Brooklyn. There's a little bit of the 1940s sticker that we'll, we will try to focus in on. And of course it won't, that's just fine. And so it's kind of heavy. We'll open this jewelry box up because you know it's surrounded in mirrors. There's the inside and it has a glass mirror here so you can put your lipstick on and a compartment and a glass bottom in the bottom. So very modern, very, 1938 to 1948-ish, when these things were popular. Um, and as I've said, this is the first jewelry box I have found in the blue mirrored, mirrored glass. You like it? Very modern for that era. But it was, a, it was it's fun to decorate with it. Now that is listed as an auction right now. It's got about five days left. But everything that I'm gonna show you now, at least I'll tell you, these are buy it nows. They're in the old curiosity shop. And just before I started this video, none of them had been sold yet. So I'm just letting you know, whenever you watch this video, if you go to the old curiosity shop, that's the eBay store. The link is in the description box below. But if you go and you say, I don't see that picture that you showed us, that means that somebody bought it. So sometimes I do auctions and sometimes I do buy it nows. That's why I want you to, if you want, subscribe to the eBay store. Doesn't cost you anything, but you can turn on notifications and get email notifications and alerts when I list new things. So you don't have to, you know, worry about missing something in a video. Was that a run on sentence? What a beautiful picture to decorate with in autumn, which is not far away. Look at this wonderful drip glaze here brown wow that's beautiful we have a nice mark on the bottom and it is rrp company um roseville not that roseville there were other companies making pottery in roseville so there's where we see the the uh roseville uh what is it ohio and then the rrp company here and is that usa in the middle so this will go back to the 1930s, 40s. There are no cracks in it. It's a good, like 10 inches tall. It's nice and heavy. Put those mums in there for uh, Halloween or fall. The damage is that it fell over. There was a chip in the lip, but someone glued it back on nicely. So you really don't see, and you may not see, but it was glued back on. That white part right there is not a chip. 
uh, the chip is glued on very smoothly to where you can't even hardly see it. Yeah? So thank goodness someone glued that back on. This is going to be beautiful on someone's table, as I said, filled with uh, autumn foliage. That's listed as a buy it now. This thing is listed as a buy it now. Now these green onyx bases were popular in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, probably even into the 60s. Desk sets, bookends, Parker pens went inside of them, uh, blotters, little perpetual calendars, you know, uh, letter openers, quintessential graduation and from high school and college gifts. He's not a clock topper, that wasn't really in style when this was made, and uh, so he is on the green onyx. I say he, I don't know if it's a, uh, a mare or a, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl horse. Uh, oops, I think it's a boy. <laughs> um, which you may catch a glimpse of that in a minute, you may not. Um, his tail is not chopped off, they just, it's sort of just, it's funny, it just kind of stops there like that. Uh, but there he is. He is made of metal and he's given a brass uh, patina on there, or he may be brass. I can't, I can't, nothing, there's nothing scratching off of it, so it may be brass. Anyway, it's not spelter and it's not broken. A lot of times they're, you n tip these over and they'll break. He's screwed onto the bottom. Yeah. And, um... Okay, and so he, this is a really good size, and it's nice. Use it as a paperweight. Use it as a clock topper if you want, but that's not what it was manufactured for. It probably went with a desk set or just just as a, a gift item from you know around the 1940s. There's no chips here at all on the marble base. That's the way it was made, and the horse is in good shape as well. So if you've got an equestrian in the family, Go for it. Let me have a little bit of my, is this, is this root beer? I think it might be. Out of my 1930s anchor hawking, I like this pattern. Some people don't care for it. Also listed as a buy it now, yes. A shoe, pin cushion. That's the original velvet on there. That's an old thing. This goes back to probably 1920 or just before. That's an old-fashioned heel on there. Uh, this could be anywhere from 1915 to 1930, but it's probably in the 1920s era. This is metal. That's a little bit of a paper sticker that I did not get off. And then the original uh, pincushion part on there. What am I going to do with that? I'm going to put it back where it was. Here is a tiny little planter. Mm hmm cute little dog. And this is made in Japan. See that back there, the remnants of it? And then there's also on the bottom, there's a made in Japan. And this would be something made between the first and uh, after the First World War, but before the second. Everybody's grandmother had these on the kitchen windowsill, yes. He's in good shape. This is nice for autumn as well. Remember, these are all buy it nows. Oh, oh, it's a flat iron, but it sits on a table, and it's a, va it's a planter or a vase. We've got all the fall fruits, including, well, I've got some fall foliage we can see there, and apples, pears, grapes, cherries, Sort of the end of the summer harvest. Probably something from the 40s. This is a decal, not hand painted. This may be made in Japan or America, I don't know. And it's cute to decorate with this time of the year. That's also listed as a buy it now. And so are these. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these. They are, are they nine ounce, five and a half inches tall? Hazel Atlas Capri in the aqua or turquoise, whatever you want to call it, classic 1960s. 
Everybody loves these. And there's one, two. There's three, four. And take my word, five, six is up there too. No chips, no cracks, no dishwasher damage. Uh, it's nice to find a set of six of them all ready to go and in good shape. Now the rest of the things that I'm going to show you are not listed yet. But by the time this video is up and running, they should be. So they might be auctions and they might be buy it nows. I haven't decided yet. But here is a little made in Japan 1930s Art Deco. Look how geometric and cubist that is. Now it's looking very piggy, whatever it is. And I've asked five people, dog or cat? Three people said cat, two people said dog. You fight it out. <laughs> I think it's a cat. I always think of a ribbon around the neck as being a kitty cat when the ears are up like that as being a cat as well. But maybe it's a Maybe it's a cat or a dog that was crossed with a pig. Is that possible to do that? I don't know what goes on in the barnyard. But it's deco and it's a little toothpick holder if you'd like it to be or whatever you want to stick down in there. Isn't that cute? Deco? I love it. And then these little guys are also made in Japan. I think I might have had these little guys before. And they have cute little, funny little cartoony faces. They're dogs. And they're also all hooked up together. They're not salt and pepper shakers or anything. It's just, you know, these cute little cheap things that were sold at Woolworths in the 30s for, you know, 12 cents, something like that. Very cute. All right, and then these, I love these basket weave. I love basket weave Japan items. Some of my favorite kitchen items. These are range shakers, there we see. You're gonna have to put corks in them, made in Japan. There's no damage on these. And you can find a wealth of kitchen items from the 30s in this uh, uh, we weave pattern that they do. All right. And then I've got uh, a wonderful lusterware piece here, which if you saw Vinny, the vintage Vinny, well, Vinny, I don't know why I call him the vintage Vinny. He, he and I went shopping, I don't know, a few days ago, and we talked about this in, in a, live, say, a live show. So it's not a biscuit jar. And I think I've had some of these before. You certainly could use it for biscuits, and I wouldn't mind putting ginger snaps down inside of that. It's really pretty. But when we take the lid off, we know, ah, it's a humidor for grandpa's tobacco. We have an open ring here in the top, and the gentleman uh, would usually get a piece of cloth or a sponge or something and uh, dampen it and shove it up in there so that the tobacco would stay moist. You see then when you put the lid on, that ring will keep the tobacco moist. But you, some men would put apple slices in there. Ooh, that would keep the tobacco moist and make it smell good too. You see that little hole in that lid up there? That's what that is. So, uh, tobacco jar, but in these days, be perfect for any type of cookies or candies that you might like. A nice, typical, made in Japan lusterware piece from the 30s. And then I've got just, I told you this was going to be a quick one. Mm. I'm disappointed in this because I didn't see the damage. I was too excited in the store. You know how you do. And eh, I personally don't like to sell damaged goods. There's some damage I can live with. This I probably, probably wouldn't have bought if I had seen the damage. 
but they're wonderful little, you know, I got hooked on the autumn colors and the luster wear and the unusual shape. Little tiny, almost uh, tea for two, cream and sugar. Uh, they are uh, hand painted in Japan. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to get things to focus or not. This one, fine, this one, fine. No chips on either one, but this one not fine. That handle was broken off and it was glued back on. So that one's okay. Handle glued back right there and right there. Now, if you're interested in these, go look at them on the eBay site. The pictures are clear to see the damage and how it was repaired. Eh, you know, you're not really going to see it when you're using it unless you really pick it up and do that. Who's going to do that? So they're still very cute for the autumn season. And if they don't sell, I'll keep them. I sure will. And I'll use them as, I'll use them as well. Now, let's wrap it up with a mystery teapot. I was attracted to this for two reasons. Number one, the color. And number two the 1930s deco style. The minute I saw this round handle here, I thought of Fiesta. Now I'm not a Fiesta collector and I'm not a Fiesta expert, but what was really throwing me off is I didn't remember in my mind and I did not think that the little decorative piece underneath of the handle was shaped like this on Fiesta. So when I bought it, I thought, I don't think that's Fiesta. Now there's no mark on the bottom yeah, um, and it, it's definitely a 1930s style. And if it's not Fiesta, then whoever made this is uh, got their inspiration, I think, from uh, Homer Lachlan's Fiesta. So I thought, well, maybe it is a piece of La Homer Lachlan. So I did this. I went all as soon as I got home. I went through completely through my through my depression pottery book and um, couldn't find it anywhere in there. So no way, I thought it might also be a piece of Bauer pottery. So, you know, one of the California potteries. It's not in here. So then, oh, oh, I'm still here. I went to my big Homer Lachlan decades of dinnerware. Look at the size of this book. What was, how much did this retail for? This retailed for 40 bucks when it was originally sold. I went through this, can't find that pot anywhere. And I absolutely went through all of the Fiesta shapes. Now let's just take a look in case you might be saying, mm, no, I think it's Fiesta. Well, hold on. Let me... Let me, let me, let me get to the, I want you to see that, and I hope you can see, that on the Fiesta pieces, well now, where did it go? Okay, it's got that ring handle, but you may not be able to see underneath the ring, the decorative uh, piece is different. It's, um, it's carved almost in a floral way, uh, rather than what we see on the teapot that I have. that I have. So I don't think you can, you can really see that, but if you're familiar, if you're very familiar with Fiesta, you'll know that that's just not quite the right thing. So I went through this quickly and couldn't find the pot. I don't know. Do you know who made this pot? I love this decorative piece under here. Now I don't have this listed yet because I really want to find out. Um, you know, good condition, just no idea. Yeah, but very inspired by the 30s. I like how my little my little mouth goes right in that circle. Okay, anybody know? I don't know. 
that should be it. Let me look around. That's all I want to show you today. Hey, it's Thursday. I don't know what you're doing for Labor Day weekend. Maybe you can get down the shore for the last time before, oh, back to school or back to whatever. Or just enjoy yourselves at home. I hope to have some more videos out this weekend. We'll see. I did some shopping with Vinny in um, the northern, sort of near the Maryland, <coughs> northern Maryland, Pennsylvania border. Uh, so maybe I'll be able to get some of that up and we'll, uh, for you to watch this weekend. Thanks for watching. If you see anything you like, check out the old curiosity shop. The link is in the description box below. And who made that coffee pot? This is Scott from the old curiosity shop saying thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now.